Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Minwi Metri. So uh, I'm very happy to talk to you guys tonight. And I'm going to talk to you about something that is near and dear to all followers of the Buddha, and that's compassion. Um, but before we do that, I just wanted to recognize if we could, maybe with just a few seconds of silence, um, that the Zen master Thich Nhat Hanh passed away this last week um, at 95 years of age. And in the West, he was a teacher of Zen to nearly everyone. With the plethora of books that he wrote, uh, with the number of Dharma talks that he gave and recorded. Um, so if you join me in just remembering what a great bodhisattva that he was, for just a moment of silence. Thank you, I appreciate it. And uh, <clears throat> I know some of you may have had the opportunity even to watch some of the uh, services that Deer Park uh, Monastery has done. I watched some of the ones that were live stream from uh, Vietnam. And though my wife speaks Vietnamese, I don't. Um, it was just interesting to watch. And uh, one of the things that I marveled about is I watched his, um, the ceremonies they were having for him in Vietnam was there were monks visiting from lots of different traditions, not just his own. And he was revered by lots of people and monastics and lay people alike from a lot of different traditions. And it reminded me a great deal of what we call the Dharma here in America. And if you think to yourself for just a moment, in America, we are a composite or a hodgepodge of different traditions and sects that have come together to practice the Dharma. And in Five Mountains Zen Order, which is one of the reasons I am a, a member of Five Mountains Zen Order, is that Venerable Wanji embraced that. And it meant a lot to me that I who had studied for several years in a Pure Land tradition and in a Theravada tradition and now in a Zen tradition could still find the Dharma all right here. And it, it, it draws me to the writings of the third Zen patriarch, Zeng San, uh, and the third Chan patriarch, I guess I should say, uh, Sang San, and in his book, um, I think it's called Xing Xing Ming, uh, <clears throat> he wrote, it was a book of his poems that he wrote, but in his book he wrote, there is one Dharma, not many, distinctions arise from the needs of the ignorant. And that to me is the Dharma that we practice, more in the West than in anywhere else. Um, and I like that. I like that maybe one of you guys studied with a Tibetan monk for some time, or a, a Lama or a Rinpoche from, from Tibet. Or maybe like, like me, you, were, you went to a um, Pure Land temple for a while. Or maybe you came from a Soto or Rinzai Japanese Zen school before you came and started practicing with us. Uh, Maybe, like me, you, you studied Theravada and the Pali Canon um, for a number of years. And yet here we all are. We sit and we talk about the Dharma every week. And so, I don't know, maybe six months, eight months ago or so, I started reading a book by Joseph Goldstein. Um, you may know Joseph Goldstein. He, uh, he has been a student of Zen. He's been a student of Vipassana meditation. He's been a student of Tibetan traditions. 
he, to me, epitomizes what we all are. And he said, in his book he wrote called The One Dharma, he said, in the one Dharma emerging of emerging Western Buddhism, the method is mindfulness, the expression is compassion, the essence is wisdom. And I thought to myself, that encapsulates what we teach and what we practice. So my topic tonight, so I've gone on a little bit already, my topic tonight is compassion. And so I'm going to throw that out there with you to you, but I'm going to argue, first of all, I'm going to say compassion is not a feeling. Compassion is not a mindset. Compassion is an action. So now I ask you, and you can answer if you want to, or you can just rhetorically think about it, and I'll go on. What is compassion to you? So I'm not going to use this as a gotcha, but I'm going to read something to you that the Buddha said shortly after his um, shortly after his own enlightenment. And by the Buddha, I mean Sakyamuni Buddha. So Sakyamuni Buddha, shortly after his enlightenment, when he started teaching his first 60 followers, and all 60 of them became arhats uh, or enlightened beings, here's what the Buddha said to them. He said, go forth, O bhikkhus, for the good of the many, for the happiness of the many, out of compassion for the world, for the good, benefit, and happiness of people and devas. Let not two go by one way. Teach the Dhamma. Excellent in the beginning, excellent in the middle, excellent in the end. Proclaim the noble life, altogether perfect and pure. Work for the good of others. You have done your duties. So there the Buddha talked about compassion, but it was an action. Go teach the Dhamma. One time the, somebody asked the Buddha, one of his followers asked the Buddha, uh, you know, why are you teaching these people who really don't believe the same way that we do and they don't have the same type of morals and ideas that we do? He said, I teach them out of compassion. So to me, that was very um, powerful message that the Buddha gave us was that he taught out of compassion. And when we share the Dhamma with each other or we share the Dharma with uh, our friends or relatives or maybe just together when we sit and practice our Zen, it's an action and we share it out of compassion. Um, but it's deeper than that. And it's deeper than that in that we... chant or we repeat every week before great bodhisattva vows. Um, in the Mahayana tradition, we have this concept of being a bodhisattva and how we are able to, to serve people by being a bodhisattva. And uh, it reminds me that, um, you know, I, I see Bryant here and I know he took the bodhisattva uh, course that uh, Buddhist Studies Online gave, and uh, it you know it reminds me of all the ways that we can learn to practice uh, and live a life as a bodhisattva. Um, and so, one of the things that I do when I practice alone uh, or with a group outside of Five Mountains Inn is I always recite either the Four Great Bodhisattva Vows or I do. Uh, a portion of the Bodhisattva prayer, um, which, um, which to me is just kind of a, it's a, it's a shortened version of the prayer that was included in the, um, uh, help me, Brian, already, oh, I always mix up the name of his, of the Shantideva book, but of the um, way of, the way of practicing the Bodhisattva life, or, uh, and so, um, so one of the things that I do is recite that because it sets me on my right course as I am ready to, um, or preparing myself to, um, to share um, those parts of the 
of the Dharma that are important to me and that I know are important to, to all of you guys. And so when we want to be a bodhisattva, when we want to help all sentient beings, um, that's it's an action verb, this compassion. And, and yes, in the English language, compassion is a noun, but we use it as an action verb. And so I wanted to read to you something that Sung San, our great teacher, said. Uh, he wrote in his book, The Compass of Zen, and I'm sure many of you, if not all of you, have read The Compass of Zen. But this is what he said. He said, compassionate action is not some idea or action. It is universal substance itself. Another name for that is bodhisattva. These actions are not for me because I have perceived that there is no I or even any actions. All beings and I are not separate. Their suffering is my suffering, the same substance. Their happiness is my happiness. So I can only function for all beings. In Sino-Korean, this is called Deja Debi Shin, great love and great compassion mind. This is the way of the absolute. Two great things come to mind to me when I read that passage from Sung Sun. And first of all, you notice the teaching in there of not self. That no self concept, that I am not separate from you. There is no I and there is no you. There is only the wholeness of the one. And that is how he encapsulates or encompasses the whole of the bodhisattva idea. So I think to myself, in our tradition, which stems uh, in great deal from the teachings of Sung San, because um, both uh, the Venerable Wanji and several of our, of our founding um, Zen masters were students of Sung San, one of the things that comes to mind to me is um, two things that, that Sung San taught. One is when we take the five precepts or when we take any precepts, Sung San always shrink them down to do no harm. The precepts that we do are not to harm other people. And when we understand that, when we understand in our core not to harm other people. Then the bodhisattva ideal comes out. How may I help you? And how wise that was, that that's the legacy that Sung San left us when we take our precepts. You know, we take the precepts and last, last week we did our repentance, which kind of is the, the you know, it was the, the wolf moon and we, we did a pr repentance prayer. And, and I always like doing that. I think it's a, a way of rejuvenating the, um, the mind a bit to set ourselves straight that, you know, these precepts that we take or whatever, they're not commandments in the Judeo-Christian ideal. They are ideals for us to strive towards, for us to learn to be better people. So as I take these and, uh, and strive to be a better person, I know that I'm not trying to do harm to others in any way, by my words, by my actions, by, um, by even my thoughts. But it doesn't stop there. True compassion, the true bodhisattva ideal is as Sun San said, how may I help you? And that's the essence of the four great bodhisattva vows that we take. That's the essence of the Bodhisattva prayer that I recite. Uh, if you give me just one minute, I didn't have it open because I didn't think to share with you guys that that's what I do when I practice um, because I, I do that on my own, so to speak, you know? Um, but I have a, if I can pull it up real quick. I have a, I have it written down here so I can just uh, tell you what it says. It says this, with a wish to free all beings, I shall always go for refuge to the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha until I reach full enlightenment. 
Enthused by wisdom and compassion, today in the Buddha's presence, I generate the mind for full awakening for the benefit of all sentient beings. As long as space remains, as long as sentient beings remain, until then, may I too remain and dispel the miseries of the world. So I leave that with you guys today, just as something to think about. Um, that compassion is not just a thought. It's not just a concept of let's be nice to people. It is a action. How may I help you? And then actually doing the helping. So I hope that is uh, something to think about as you commit yourself to live a bodhisattva life, that we think about it as an action verb and not just as a man. So thank you guys.